Speakers Network family, super excited that you are here. Welcome to yet another BSN Speaker Spotlight. My name is Brian Oles. If we haven't met yet, founder and president here at Black Speakers Network, where our mission is to equip, connect, and inspire the next generation of Black professional speakers. And get ready because we have four incredible speakers that are going to be sharing with you today and what we call rapid fire style interviews. These are five minute uh, kind of micro interviews with the goal of getting you an opportunity to meet uh, the incredible members that we have here in the Black Speakers Network community from across the country. And so this is just part of our series. Uh, we've been doing these uh, every single week and we'll continue to do so until we talk to all of our speakers. And the only way to do that is kind of to place them in these five minute rapid fire sessions. But as you if you've seen any of our past series, you know you can learn a lot of information in five minutes. And so uh, what I will say is that if you are on the meeting planning side or you host uh, events, conferences, uh, virtual summits, maybe you run a podcast and you might be looking for that next perfect guest, that next speaker to come on, that next expert uh, to be able to talk to your audience, you might find them right here at Black Speakers Network. And if you are a speaker yourself, maybe you are trying to get more visibility. If you're out there looking to uh, get in front of new audiences, like the speakers that you're going to hear from today, we would love to hear from you too. Both of you can go to blackspeakersnetwork.com. If you're looking for a speaker, you can go to blackspeakersnetwork.com forward slash find a speaker, uh, which is in the comments below. Or you can go to blackspeakersnetwork.com forward slash join, and we invite you to become a BSN premium member if you are looking to get in front of more audiences. But as I mentioned, we have some exciting speakers that are coming up, and I don't want to waste any time at all. And so as I mentioned, these folks are from all across the country, so I'll let you know what neck of the woods that they are in as they bring them up. So right now, I'm going right down the road uh, to Suitland, Maryland. And we have Miss Yalika Kimber in the building. Hello, Actually, hello. Hello, hello, indeed. Welcome to BSN Speaker Spotlight, Yalika. And uh, if you don't mind, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you for having me. I'm Yalika Kimber. I'm a CPA, MBA, and I'm a business planning and growth coach. And what I do is I help entrepreneurs understand the language of business. So did you know that your business is speaking to you? Yeah, it speaks to you through your financial statements. That's not just for your accountant, your CPA, or your tax preparer. You, entrepreneur, need to understand your financial statements because your business is telling you exactly what you need to know. It tells you that it needs more customers. It tells you you need to cut expenses. It tells you what your next move should be. But if you don't understand the language of business, your business is going unheard today and you are not, re not responding to its needs. So that's what I do. Wow. Yeah, we were talking a little bit before this. I think this is something that all entrepreneurs kind of get stuck with. I actually, Yalika, have been on a tip now watching Shark Tank, you know, which I know everybody knows. And that's the number one thing I think entrepreneurs get nailed for in that show is not knowing their numbers. Their numbers, not knowing their numbers. If that if you don't know your numbers, you're just doing a hobby. You're just doing activities. So yeah, yeah. so we, we as accountants, we can tell everything. So if I want to know about Black Speakers Network, all I can say is, Brian, send me your financials. I can tell you what you've been doing for the last 12 months. I can tell you. Listen, so powerful, so powerful. So tell us a little bit. Um, I'm curious about your journey. How did you get into the business planning uh, and finance space? 
Well, a long, long time ago, I attended Virginia State University and earned a degree in accounting. That was back in 1992, back when Will was still the Fresh Prince. Um, and I spent over the last 30 years in accounting, financial planning, and entrepreneurship. I later earned my certified public accountant a certification from the Commonwealth of Virginia and earned an MBA from the College of William and Mary. And all between then, I've done everything in accounting, audit, um, corporate tax, um, individual tax, payroll, you name it, I've done it. But um, what I've learned is that our people have a deficit in the area of financial literacy, that we don't know, we understand making money, but we don't understand the total picture of money. And we get into... Um, problems because we we don't understand how to continuously um, make our businesses run smoothly, how to plan for the future. So then we get into trouble. Can I can I say what I want to say? So then you get relied upon a PPP loan or business credit because your 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 business is cash thirsty. And it's about cash is still king people. And so when you need that kind of cash infusion in your business, it's because you don't have a business plan and don't understand what your business is telling you to keep it vibrant and sustained. That makes perfect sense to me. And I'm glad you're doing this work because like I said, uh, it's, it's there seems like a gap. And, you know, most entrepreneurs, you become an entrepreneur because you see a problem uh, in the marketplace. You create a service uh, or a, a product to address it. However, that doesn't automatically mean that you have the knowledge and expertise to be able to, uh, you know, run and scale a business and the uh, financial and tax implications and all the things that come along with that. But one thing I like that you say is that you say you focus on removing the fear and intimidation of the financial experts of your business. Can you talk yeah. a little bit more about what you see the most common with entrepreneurs as it relates to uh, fear? Like, what is it that they're trying to like avoid and get around as it relates to uh, this conversation about business finance? I think it's their fear of not having enough, um, fear of, of, of scarcity and not being able to meet their needs. And we really can't prosper in a place of fear. Fear um, makes you miss details and not really take time to really plan. You're just hustling, going from, from project to project and not really building a sustainable model and a successful career. Um, one of the, the challenges that I have with entrepreneurs is that they come with an employee mindset and, and how I, you can tell if you have an employee mindset is that when you make a sale, you think that all that money is yours, just like a paycheck. And that is not the case. There are all expenses have to be paid before you can, uh, you can realize a profit. And so I see a lot of entrepreneurs raping their business and I'm sorry to put that word out there early. But they're raping and crippling their business because they take all of the cash out early. As soon as it hits their account, they're trying to live on that instead of building a business model that allows for income, all expenses to be paid. That means you have to sell enough, have enough offered in the marketplace that you are creating income to cover the expenses that generated that income and then also have a profit for yourself. So that mindset is really a challenge. They think that that deposit is their paycheck and it is not. And they pay dearly on the back end with the IRS and everywhere, everyone, everywhere else, the loans, the credit, because yeah. those bills are going to become due. And they're focused more on getting money in their account than managing a great business. And Eulika, I know that I know you're a CPA and again, you have like a lot of experience and I think, you know, entrepreneurs and, you know, any business owner would need to surround themselves with like a, a, a ecosystem of people that can help support them. You know, probably a bookkeeper, an accountant, um, you mentioned taxes. So they were like tax specialists. Like at where, where do you kind of fit into that financial dream team, if you will? At what point should, you know, entrepreneurs be picking up the phone, calling you? Or at what point should organizations, you know, that maybe, you know, work with small businesses be reaching out to you to um, bring you in? So at this point in my career, I, I used to a long time ago do, do the bookkeeping, do the um, taxes and payroll and stuff. But I've kind of graduated myself. I fired myself from those duties. I refer you to other folks. And, but what I do is help create the structure for you to operate in those areas. So I help create profit plans. We create an offering mix. What products or services are you trying to 
sell. We also get into the numbers of what cost is it going to take to realistically bring that product or service to the marketplace. So my area is more of coaching. Um, the earlier, the better. Uh, whenever you have a profitable idea, we need to first test, is it really profitable? So people put ideas out there, but the question is, is it uh, is there a demand in the workplace in the in the marketplace for it? And how can you make that profitable? And that's where I do. I do more coaching, teaching in that area, speaking to help people along the way. Because the problem is, is that when they get the CPA or tax person, they act like they don't, that's none of their business. And I'm here to say, no, it's your business. And you can actually, entrepreneurs are numbers people. We got in this for the money. So we got to understand what it looks like. So I help teach those business owners the language of business. So you can understand what your tax preparer is talking about. Because I want to, I, I feel like I'm here um, preaching to, to everybody today. But I just wanted to say, doesn't matter if you have a CPA, you and only you are responsible for the numbers on that return. So you have to understand if it says a million, I'm doing good, Brian, but I know I didn't do a million dollars in business last year. So if numbers don't jive with what you know to be true, you have a system and can understand period by period that that's true or not. And if it's right, and also how you can move towards that million. There's a realistic way to do that. And that's what I do. I help create profit plans. I love it. Profit plan. It sounds like everyone needs one. And so we are almost out of time, but I would love to end the question as I end all these uh, spotlight interviews. How is it that you want to be remembered? What do you want to be remembered for, Yalika? I want to be remembered for speaking and teaching the language of business, which is accounting. Accounting is, even though I have on glasses, accounting is not just for the smart people with the glasses. Accounting to some degree has to be to every entrepreneur. You have to understand revenue, income, expense. Those are things you have to get comfortable with and know what that means in your business. If you are a hair, if you do weave today, you need to know how many weaves it takes to cover the rent, how many weaves it needs to take, how many you need to do installs or braids or yards you cut or services you provide. You need to know how many. That number should be in your head. If somebody says, hey, I want you to buy this copy machine. No, that's three heads. I can't do that today. You have to know the numbers of your business. And I challenge every entrepreneur under the sound of my voice to get comfortable with the with the, your numbers. As a matter of fact, pull your financials today and look at them. And what? You don't have it? You can create a financial system today. There are lots of free tools and connect to your bank account. You cannot run your business in the blind. I want you to know accounting is the language of business. And you can't be in this country called entrepreneurship and not know the language. Well, Yulika, I'll tell you one thing. You may have glasses, but you got the stylish ones on. And so that's just kind of a dovetail into how uh, less intimidating and kind of cool you make uh, business finance uh, sound. And I think uh, at the end of the day, not only that, but you're providing tools and resources to be able to help us you know, move forward. And so I just want to encourage everyone, if you're an entrepreneur, if you don't have a profit plan yet, or maybe you're an organization that you know leads um, entrepreneurs or other people striving to grow their business and you need a speaker, Yalika is here. You can go to blackspeakersnetwork.com forward slash find a speaker, find her profile on there and uh, make sure that y'all connect with her. But listen, Yalika, I want to thank you again for dropping these nuggets of wisdom and uh, thanks for being here as a uh, part of the Black Speakers Network community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. So now you have a little bit of a flavor. If this is your first BSN Spotlight speaker series, your first time watching it, you have a flavor of how it operates. And as you can see, you can learn a lot really fast. And again, I encourage you to make sure that you connect with these speakers. They're all part of the Black Speakers Network uh, ecosystem. And so we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to continue the conversation after we're done. But we're going to talk to somebody that's right here in my own hometown, which is the great Baltimore, Maryland. So Mr. King Teasdale is here in the building. And uh, King, I want to welcome you to uh, Black Speakers Network, uh, Speaker Spotlight. And if you don't mind, sir, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Well, Brian, thank you so very much for having me. It is such an honor and a privilege to be in this spotlight and watching your growth and your business developed as well as it has. Um, you are inspiration to me and it's one of the reasons why I recognize that my audience does wait. I am a currently a spiritual life coach and I took on that 
banner because I was seeing the trauma that our people are experiencing through the sight and the eyes of being a paramedic for 20 years with the Baltimore City Fire Department. People come from all different backgrounds of life with all different sorts of issues and problems, which is all linked to the mindset that they have become conditioned to live in, but we are creatures of habit. So I decided to shift my gears and come into a place of love so that I can help others be free from the limitations that this world puts on us. Absolutely. Listen, I have a lot of questions for you, King Man. First of all, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, I, I, you know, you say being 20 years as a paramedic in the city of Baltimore and that might grace uh, past people. But what I know for a fact, uh, just like, you know, members of the military or any sort of like first responders, you know, being uh, on the streets of a major city as a paramedic for, you know, multiple for two decades means that you were in the trenches, you were saving lives and you were, you know, actually helping people. And now you transition that from helping people, you know, and, you know, emergency services to, you know, supporting and serving people as a life coach, a spiritual life coach. So I appreciate that. Um, some people may not have heard the term spiritual life coach. You know, we've heard of life coach and we've heard of spiritual leaders, but not spiritual life coach. So could you help contextualize what that is and, um, you know, give us some insight into the work that you do there? Absolutely. I compose this position from the leading of the spirit. And I've discovered that we as conditioned creatures of habit, we develop a mindset that we are locked into not realizing that there is a paradigm that has been developed deliberately to keep us from attaining a rightful place in this world of having abundance and living a free and enjoyable life. So many people are caught up in these negative tones and negative vibrations, and they constantly repeat these things over and over again, not realizing that what you think about, you bring about. And one of the biggest issues is, and ever since I've been a paramedic, has been the problem of crime in the city of Baltimore and these murders. Yet, every time we turn around and the news is talking to us about it, all they're telling us is the bad stuff, the murders that's occurred. And we are constantly locked into a mindset that is not for our greatest and highest good. Absolutely. And I'm glad you broke that down because, you know, if you think about it, uh, <sighs> Every time you turn around, particularly if you watch the news or if you're, you know, not really careful about how you're consuming information, um, all you hear is negative, 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 negative. And you are absolutely uh, correct with that, um, King. And so I noticed that you uh, also have a passion for making sure that uh, the needs of our uh, Black organizations are met specifically. Um, so can you talk a little bit about your work there and um, what that actually means and, you know, why you're so uh, passionate about Black organizations specifically um, finding um, opportunities to thrive? Yes, I have discovered that here in Baltimore, there are many Black organizations that are striving to do the best that they can, but they are limited in funds, they are limited in resources. And it led me to look deeper into the commonalities of us as a people collectively. And I came to this to create an organization called the Souls of Life Society. Our motto is through the power bestowed by God and mankind to do what must be done. And our 
mission statement is harmonizing the unity needed for black organizations to thrive so that humanity so that humanity can survive. We have been inundated with a mindset years ago, and I called on spirit about this, that speaks constantly of cash ruling everything around us, which was cream, was the acronym. And so I called on spirit and asked, what do we need to do in order to subvert the recognition that cash rules everything around us when we know that you have all power? And what I was told in the spirit was we need to use sugar. And it kind of threw me. And I was like, okay, well, what does that mean? And I discovered that it was the revelation of understanding that no matter where you are in your life's journey, none of us can succeed unless we connect with our spirit within. And sugar is an acronym for a term called uh, succeed understanding God's absolute reign and that reign of God is what our whole experience is all about so when I look and I discover the primary concern that everyone has is life and love so I searched and discovered that the scripture oftentimes says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all will be added to you. In my meditations, what came to me was, seek first the kingdom of love, and all else will. So that's what our organization does now. We have a program called Attaining Mastery of Living Awareness to open our mind and our consciousness to step into what God has intended for us, as opposed to what the world has deliberately attempted to have us conform to. Mm, powerful, powerful, powerful. And uh, I know we only have a few seconds left, but I do want to give you an opportunity to close out like we do with everyone. And that is the last question of what is it that you want people to remember about you? If you could give it to us 30 seconds, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, I would want that legacy to be recognized that I love you, humanity, more than any one mortal man can. That all I want is your best and highest good. And lastly, because I have stepped into this place as an agent of change to dream the impossible dream, I am dreaming this dream for our children and our children's children to learn to love. Beautifully said. Listening. Listen, uh, King, I really appreciate you sharing. And again, if you want to connect with King, I highly recommend you uh, jump on over to blackspeakersnetwork.com. He's the only King uh, that we have in the BSN network, so he's easy to find. King, I think your uh, nephew, do you have a nephew named Isaac? I'm Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. Isaac Best. I think yes. he's wild. Yeah, so you got a lot of fans in the comments, is my point. So you got a lot of people. Beautiful. I appreciate and, that. And talking about your best, so lots of love. And uh, again, appreciate you for everything that you do, sir. Thank you for the kind words and thanks for being a part of the Black Speakers Network community. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much, Brian, and continued success. Thank you. All right, guys, so we are rocking and rolling. It is, uh, we're live on Saturday, but regardless of where or where or when you watch this, I want you to know that uh, Black Speakers Network is here as a resource uh, for you. And so we will continue to move right along. So I'm gonna head on down the uh, East Coast and over to uh, uh, Music City, I believe, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. We have Miss Lawana Wilson uh, in the building. Luana, good morning. Welcome to BSN Speaker Spotlight. And uh, if you don't mind, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Well, hello, everybody. And thanks, Brian, for this opportunity to sit this morning and share with you and everyone else. Um, I really appreciate all your hard work, Brian. We, I call you our fearless leader at <laughs> Blast Speakers Network. And we are just so appreciative of all you do to get us on those big stages and in front of those crowds. Um, you're the hardest working man in the speaking business. So thanks so much for everything you do, sir. <laughs> um, I am Lawana Wilson. I am 
a value development coach. And I'll get into that a little bit as far as what that means and fleshing that out a little bit for you. But I have been living in Nashville for the past 15 years. And I originally, I grew up, I hailed from Flint, Michigan. And so uh, I have had my hands in the pot of development for a while now. And that's personal development, starting out with just mentoring our youth. And then from there, it really grew into something I realized was a passion. Uh, that I love the development process. I love walking people through how to get from here to their next. And so it really turned into something that I, I really didn't expect, to be quite honest with it. But I love it. I love to help people grow and I help love to get people moving forward on their dreams and visions. Um, I've been doing that for a good 20 plus years now and, and really starting to kind of make it a real thing now. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you kind of walked us through the journey a little bit. Uh, and you mentioned that you're a value development coach. There again, some people may not know exactly what that is, uh, but I personally, uh, you know, I remember when I latched on to uh, personal development and started reading books almost, I, I feel like everybody's journey is a little different. Mine was like by accident, but at the end of the day, you realize that there are tools and resources out here to help you kind of accelerate your your growth. But can you tell people what what is a value? What is a value development coach do? Like, what are you uh, focused on uh, when it comes to serving? Okay, in a nutshell, just before all the big details, in a nutshell, it is simply someone who is in your life as a coach who is helping you or assisting you to embrace your uniqueness. We all have something that we are are that is unique about us that is one of a kind about us. And so my first thing that I do is help you identify that and embrace that fully. And then and just empower you from there to become the best self, your best self, whoever that is in whatever aspect that is. So that's in the very brief form. That's what it is. In the, over the last 20 plus years of me doing mentoring with our young people, I found out, Brian, that there's not a lot of conversation about their worth that happens in just their development and their growth. I've spoken with many young people and nobody really has had or very few, I won't say ain't nobody, but very few have had a conversation with a coach or their parents or uh, whoever their mentor might be or or their pastor. No one's really not a lot of people are really having conversation about their own personal worth. And so when I begin to open that up with them it's like the lights come on. It's like, wait a minute. You know, I don't have to compare myself to others. You mean there's something really special about me specifically? And so it's like a whole world open up, opens up to them. So that's kind of what I do. Absolutely. And then you mentioned going back into your story that your original hometown was Flint, Michigan. Yes. And so I understand that you used to host a uh, morning, um, like a drive time uh, radio show. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? And was that connected to kind of like your early start in uh, the development, personal development space? I sure did, Brian. I was on WFLT, 1420 AM in our hometown in Flint, Michigan. That's our gospel station. Love my time there. Absolutely love radio broadcasts and television broadcasts. That's one of my first loves. And uh, on that show, it was a drive time show. And I connected with our educators because it was first thing in the morning. And so our teachers were up and ready for class. And so it, the first connection really was with the teachers, actually, with the, the uh, principals and teachers, just telling them, encouraging them on their day, uh, and just getting them ready to, to you know, get in there with the students. So that's a whole you know, thing. My mom was an educator 30 years. I come from a line of educators and pastors. And so it, that really has kind of been my environment growing up. And so, yes, uh, at, at FLT, I was definitely there for not only just encouraging them with music, but also just their morning host that got them pumped up and ready to engage with the young people. And then, of course, on my own back then, I also had a, had a part in what we call the Daughters of Destiny. And that was a young girls group that was probably my very first organized um, mentoring type setting where we mentored 13 through 16 and uh, walked them through a lot of the different changes in life that they will experience and really built into them that, that that system of worth. Very good, very good. And just one other like nugget that I found in your uh, background, you've actually done a fair amount of missionary work as well, I believe. And so you travel around the world to South Africa, Jamaica, Nambia. So 
Um, and has that just been more of a passion um, pro project or has that helped you to provide insight into uh, what you do on the value development uh, coaching side as well? You know, Brian, um, funny as it is, missions actually centered around young people as well. My very first missions ass assignment in Jamaica, we found we founded a, a mentoring kind of organization for a uh, high school campus and the college campus. So it still kept me around youth and, and young people, which is I think is just very indicative of where my heart is. Those are my people. I just love uh, the youth and the young people. So typically, not all on mission trip, but typically they they were around college and, and and high schoolers, and that's what we focused on in those countries and who we connected with. Outstanding. And so, who are the people that you would want to reach out to you now? Like, who do you love? You know, serving whether it's be on the organization side or on the um, individual side. Like, who are those people that um, you just uh, enjoy serving the most? You know, Brian, my people are millennials. They find me even when I'm not looking for them. They they find me, <laughs> and so um, I could be minding my own business and and literally like, you know, they don't want to talk to you know, fifty year old me, and they will find me. And so they are my people. I, I have I have settled it the matter. They are my people. So if you have an organization or a ministry or a an educational program where you see that your young people are really struggling with this whole comparison to one another, uh, they they find their worth in what they have, like their material possessions or who they're with. You know, if they're with the popular people, then they feel better about themselves. And and even uh, a lot of times our young people are finding their worth in, in like relationships. You know, that's another side that I really have to de dive into because that's a big side. That's a big issue for them. So if you see them finding their worth there, instead of really investing in themselves and realizing what they hold, what gifts and abilities they hold, then I'm your person. I need to come in there and get them focused on what's so great about them. Awesome. And in 30 seconds that we have left, could you tell the people from a legacy perspective, what is it that you want to be remembered for the most? You know, Brian, I want to be remembered as the woman who knew her worth and fully embraced her uniqueness and empowered everybody she came in contact with to do the same we are designer originals is what I say a lot when I'm sharing with my young people. We're designer originals. There's nobody like you. Now, there may be some people out there doing some things like you do it, but they don't do it like you do it. And you are your greatest asset. And so that's what I would leave with people. That's what I want to help you discover. And I want you to help you embrace that. Very well said. And I'm sure you are, are well on your way uh, to doing that with all the work that you've um, have already completed and the things that you continue to do. So Luana, thank you so much. Nashville, Tennessee is in the building. Uh, listen, if you want to connect with Luana or hey, it, just like we, uh, anyone else you've heard today, maybe not you directly, but you know, share this video, share this uh, snippet on whatever platform, maybe tag somebody that you think would be a benefit and uh, make sure that you get connected uh, right below at blackspeakersnetwork.com. But Luana, thank you so much uh, for sharing a little bit of your journey yes. and, um, and and some nuggets of insight. And thanks for being part of the Black Speakers Network community as well. Thanks so much again, Brian. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. All right. So we were rocking and rolling. We have one more speaker left on this beautiful Saturday morning. And uh, look, we have been all across the country. We've been here in Maryland, Nashville, Tennessee, and now I'm jumping down to Durham, North Carolina. We have Mr. Jimmy in the building. He is actually, I, I, you know, I, I, I always look forward to talking with you, Jimmy, because technology is my, <laughs> it's my, is, is my heart and soul here. But I want to welcome you to BSS Speaker Spotlight Series. And if you don't mind, uh, take a few moments to tell the people a little bit about yourself. Well, sure. Well, thank you. I couldn't help but, but notice that your previous speaker was from Flint, Michigan. I was born and raised in Flint, Michigan before I moved to Virginia and then to Durham, North Carolina. Uh, so it just this coincidence. And I really want to reach out to Ms. Wilson later on. Uh, but years ago, just as the computer uh, industry was really taking off with these uh, PCs, a friend introduced me to a Macintosh computer and I fell in love. 
And so this was in the late 80s, early, all throughout the 90s. I started teaching people how to use software, all the software that was coming out over the years. And then a little later on, I started to specialize in database development. But around the year 2015, I started thinking, well, what do I want to do with all of this, these tech skills that I've accumulated over the years? And I came up with the concept of every dot black. And every dot black is using technology or helping entrepreneurs use technology in their businesses. And that's what we do. So we promote technology to use it in your business. We also promote entrepreneurship. Um, and so we just, we just try to help folks. And we have guest speakers all the time. Every Monday night, we have a guest speaker. And actually, you were one of our speakers a while wow. back. You did a great job. Uh, and because of the uh, pandemic, we've moved to Zoom. And now we're also in the Caribbean and in Africa with weekly meetings of entrepreneurs helping them with their technology. So that, that's really my passion, just showing people how to use the skills that, that I've accumulated over the years to help their businesses uh, be successful. Yeah, I absolutely love the work that you do at Every Dot Black, Jimmy. And uh, one of the things I thought is cool is that, you know, every business, every community, you know, needs to find a way to differentiate themselves a little bit and to stand out. And uh, not only are you creating this incredible um, platform for entrepreneurs, but even just the way you branded the domain, you created Every Dot Black. And so normally with a website, it's, you know, dot .com or dot right. .org or dot .net, you've actually created a category for dot black. So can you talk a little bit about uh, the thought process that went into that and how you actually did it? Because I haven't seen anybody else kind of um, do such a great job of kind of capturing um, that from a brand perspective. Well, it's kind of funny how it happened because actually when I first started thinking about what do I want to do, I had everyblackentrepreneur.com. I had everyblackspeaker.com, believe it or not. I had everyblackauthor.com. And I, instead of all these dot coms, I, I learned that there was a dot black domain. And so I shortened it to just every dot black. And so our slogan is dot black is the new dot com. Uh, and that just really stuck people like that. But the dot black domain really represents sophistication, like high end, like little black tie, judges black robe. And so I just really loved it. And it just kind of works. Uh, so we're every dot black. We say not not dot net, not dot com, just every dot black, dot black is the new dot com. Absolutely. That's really, really cool. So I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what you're seeing real time. You mentioned the pandemic and, you know, folks are continuing to uh, figure out, I think the word of the year for 2020 and 2021 was pivot. And uh, mm -hmm. technology was certainly a big part of that, whether it was consumer brands trying to figure out how to, you know, directly, you know, go after customers and move away from retail or whether it be here in the speaky world, you know, folks had to figure out what Zoom was or how to set up a webinar or a website or, you know, go after e-commerce for the first time. What is it, um, what are some of the trends you're seeing just as it relates to um, entrepreneurs embracing technology? I know tech is a large realm um, and you've, you know, seen a little bit of everything from the software side to database, but like, what are some of the conversations top of mind that you guys are having at Every Dot Black as it relates to helping, you know, entrepreneurs make that shift? Well, sure. I, I think it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in. You've got to develop some tech skills. Even you don't have to be a programmer, but you've got to develop some basic tech skills. Uh, and what's happened is this made the world is smaller now because some of the people that are coming on our meetings they're reaching out to one another. It, the location doesn't matter. So some of our Caribbean members are reaching out to the U.S. members and they're actually beginning partnerships or joint ventures uh, with people. We're actually working with some folks in Africa now because we're able to use those tech skills. And I tell people too, you know, a lot of times that word technology scares people, but because of my background, my experience in teaching so many people how to use the software, we just start at ground zero. So some of the things that we've done is just helping people, uh, maybe you wanna learn how to be a podcaster or you wanna learn how to use Canva so you can create graphics for your, for your business or even how to create a streaming TV show. We've got a, a streaming TV network. So those are just some things, even how to use PowerPoint or Zoom. Uh, so we just kind of really show them how to use technology in their businesses. And we have a number of those classes on our web, listed on our website. But we just kind of break it down and make it real simple and try to get people not to be afraid of it, because it, again, it doesn't matter what kind of business you have. Uh, for example, what you're doing right now, 
if people, if, if we weren't, didn't have those tech skills, you wouldn't be having this interview. We're in different locations. I'm in North Carolina and the people watching us wouldn't be able to see us. So, so right, just this is a great example of getting more exposure because of our tech skills, basic tech skills that we've developed. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember, uh, Jimmy, when the shutdowns first happened and the first thing that the first time I knew that it was going to be a major disruption is when um, I was actually at lunch and I got a text message saying that uh, the conference South by Southwest was um, canceled. And this mm -hmm. was in 2020. And so, you know, one of the largest conferences in the country canceled, just done, not rescheduled, right. canceled. And right. so uh, with that, you know, everybody was trying to figure out what to do. And we have really been relying on technology, to your point, um, here in BSN for uh, since the beginning, you know, since we have this large national network and uh, it, it really gave us an opportunity to accelerate. But I love what you all are, are absolutely doing. Now, you actually you personally deliver training to like over 5000 people um, across the country you used to over the you know, years. go around for, for many years. Yeah. So yeah. do you still um, is that still part of and obviously you're part of Black Speakers Network as well. And so do you still find yourself now um, delivering more individual workshops and trainings for organization, or have you shifted to doing other types of speaking? Uh, speaking actually, of <laughs> yeah, turn, turn the, the phone off there. Uh, yeah. No, I don't do, I'm not on the road anymore, not like that for a while there. I mean, I literally was going all over the country, like say during the 90s and the, uh, early part of 2000, just going all over the country, teaching people how to use technology, software for the businesses. And, and that 5,000 number is probably an, it's probably greater. That was just a general estimate that I that I put together. But what we're doing now is I'm actually still teaching people to use, for example, in uh, first of August, I'll be in Tampa with the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Mm -hmm. And they, I'll be providing a, a session on the metaverse. A lot of people have been hearing about the metaverse and Bitcoin. And so I'm not a Bitcoin expert by any means, but I am intrigued with the metaverse. And so I've been providing some tech training on that. And to let people know that, and I don't want to get sidetracked, but let people know even in that case, there's things going on right now that too many times uh, people in our community are not aware. And by the time we're aware, it's like the, the, you know, the horse is out the barn. Uh, people are buying real estate right now in the metaverse. And that's one of the things that I ran into when I was providing computer training years ago and even today is that I'm seeing the technology and the things that are available, but I'm not seeing us utilize it and use it as much as we can and should. So that really motivates me to, to say, hey, we, we, we need to be on that bandwagon as well because it's not going away. It, it just well, isn't. I think part of it is a challenge, right? Because you don't know, like it's very difficult. And again, I think the cool thing I like about technology is the fact that, you know, once you learn a piece of technology, it helps you kind of unlock the world for other things. So if you learn how to use a computer, it helps you use a smartphone. If you learn how to use a smartphone, yeah. it helps you use a smart watch. And so by being more technically literate in one domain, it has spillover benefits for learning, you know, different types of things. But I think part of the challenge sometimes when it comes to things like the metaverse, for example, is that we don't know what is going to be here to stay and what is going to be here, like basically a fad. And so mm -hmm. how do you kind of get entrepreneurs especially because you know we got limited time and you know a lot of entrepreneurs that operators focused on like the day-to-day -day. how do you get people to get exposed and to learn you know like what to pay attention to versus the things that they need maybe more immediate or they if they can't quite see the exact utility for it right here in the moment yet but i think yeah, that's a very good question there's some things that makes those those immediate needs yeah, we need to address those right away. But I think it's still important to be aware, even if, like I say, you don't have to be a program, you don't have to be all in 100%, but we need to be aware because when those opportunities arise, if we see those opportunities, then we're, we're ready. We're not like, you know, we're not just completely out of, don't know anything about it. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm really excited about the metaverse, I personally can see this alternate universe where people are trading, buying and selling. In fact, people are, are literally making money right now, today, in that, that realm. So I just don't want to see us left out. 
Uh, someone just paid $450,000 to be Snoop Dogg's neighbor in the metaverse. I heard about that. Yeah, <laughs> which is insane, but it's happening right now. So that's amazing. Well, I, I love the fact that uh, every dot black is uh, on the cutting edge of competency and, you know, creating, like you said, just awareness around these different things. And so, you know, people can, um, you know, have the option to uh, deep dive into the topic a little bit more if they need to. Um, right. But in a few moments that we have left, uh, could you let pe people know we always end with the same question, um, Jimmy, right. which is. How do you want to be remembered? You know, what do you, what do you want your legacy to be in this space? Well, I just hope that um, I'm remembered as someone that inspired folks to to first of all step out, take a chance on themselves, and to uh, I, I really promote entrepreneurship. But again, in order to be a successful entrepreneur today, you've got to uh, embrace technology and not be afraid of it. So if I can get some folks over that hurdle, then you know, even if all the time I see people, our members, where they, they've taken some class and uh, one lady today just shared a video with me that she had learned to do because she took the class. And so that, that's the rewarding part when I see people um, use some of the things that I'm able to share with them. Uh, and it's not about the money, it's about the personal satisfaction to see them succeed and be successful. So that's really, that's the motivating force for me. And I can see that for sure. You could absolutely tell the people that are, you know, in it for the right reasons. And, you know, we all need to eat and pay the bills and everything like that. But I can tell, you know, when we have individuals, leaders in the community like you who are focused on uh, making sure that, you know, we kind of bring up uh, a strong generation, a uh, more technical, literate, uh, stronger economic um, community behind us. So thanks for all that you do jimmy in that regard and if y'all want to connect with him please make sure you do so at blackspeakersnetwork.com the link to every dot black and you know any way that you want to connect with him is right there on our website and jimmy i just want to say thank you again um for sharing some nuggets of wisdom with us giving us some insight into the future we definitely have to have you back and talk a little bit more about the metaverse and some of the things that you're you're um learning about and uh, of course, thanks for being a part of the Black Speakers Network community. Well, I'd be glad to. And, I, and really, I want to thank you as well. I know everyone does, but you, really, you're doing an awesome job, have done an awesome job. And we've kind of followed each other over the years. You know, we're both getting started around the same time, but I really admire what you've done. And I'm, I really want to be even more active in your in your network. So I, I promote you as well. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, let's get it. You know, rising tide raises all ships, as they say. So I really, really appreciate that. All right. Well, guys, we are done. Listen, um, this is the Black Speakers Network uh, Speaker Spotlight Series. What you're getting right now is just a, a sample. You know, every speaker that you heard from from the day or if you missed past interview series, you should be able to just go onto the playlist on YouTube and you can binge watch uh, any of them that we've done so far. These are some incredibly talented people that we have that are leading their industry in terms of creating um, research opportunity um, that are supporting people across multiple industries, health and wellness, technology. We've heard from real estate, financial expertise, you name it. It's right here in Black Speakers Network. And so if you are looking for a uh, speaker community to join, again, I encourage you to jump over to blackspeakersnetwork.com forward slash join. We'd love to have you be a part of the Black Speakers Network community where you not only get speaking opportunities like this, but also access to training and resources as well. Uh, so that is it for me. Um, again, uh, we always say here at Black Speakers Network, keep speaking up because your audience awaits and I will see you next time. Being at an HBCU like Morgan State University, I saw firsthand the talent, the expertise, the creativity that we bring to the table when it comes to this world of public speaking. Black Speakers Network is a space where I can interact and engage with my tribe, with black speakers. It's all reflective of an abundance mindset that there is enough for all of us to win big. BSN serves others not only in community, culture, but around the world. BSN not only helped me book additional paid opportunities, but gave me the accountability and confidence booster I needed to really strive and thrive consistently in my business.
they curate all the engagements and email them to you. So all you have to do is simply click and apply to the one that's applicable for your niche. I have built my business and have expanded my knowledge, met amazing people, and I have land several speaking engagements. I truly thank the entire team behind Black Speakers Network for helping me share my story with the world. In less than three years, I was able to increase my visibility, my credibility, and even my connectivity. What I experienced with VSN is phenomenal connections. And I've met so many great people that have added value to my life in ways I just wouldn't have expected. If you want to speak on college stages, there's BSN has something for you. If you want to speak and sell, I feel like BSN has a cohort for you. At the end of the day, Black Speakers Network is really there for anyone who is longing to reach the audience that they're called to serve. Black Speakers Network truly is a place where you can feel like you're home. If you are on the fence, get off the fence and join the family. You won't regret it. It is the number one organization that I recommend that every speaker become a member of if you really want to catapult your success and maximize to its fullest potential your voice.